Hey Wampers! In this video, I'll be teaching you how you can create in 3D, starting by combining simple primitives to create more complex shapes, adding materials to your creations like glass, give it some of your own personality and finish it off with some lighting. So let's get started, feel free to follow along. So first off, let's hover over our top bar where we find our basic primitives. We want to start with a basic cylinder. If we hover over the edge of the cylinder, we can scale it down. And then at the right in our properties menu of the primitive, we can round it up. I'll go for around 60% here. And then we can copy our shape by holding Alt and just dragging it out of the already existing shape. Now we can scale it up again. And it looks a bit weird at the bottom, so I'm decreasing the roundness again to around 20-ish, maybe a bit lower. And this is looking quite good already. So now we are copying this shape here again to make it whole for that. We are just scaling it a little bit smaller and then turning it into a negative in the object's properties menu. And we can also fully scale it down so it's completely whole on the inside. And I'm also increasing the group strength just a little bit. You can also type in accurate numbers. I'm going for around 15, maybe 10, just to round it up from the inside a little bit as well. And now let's create some more detail um, to the overall shape and make it more complex. And for that, I'm basically just copying our already existing shape once again. I'm scaling it down and wider. We can scale equally from both sides if we hold Alt while scaling. And then I'm also rounding this up completely. Now we are making those cuts to the cup or to the glass that those kind of glass designs often have. I think it looks really cool. Um, we just put it in there a little bit, give it a bit of grouping as well to smooth it out and make final adjustments uh, so we like it. And now the question is, how do we actually rotate around our glass accordingly? For that, we're going to copy our lowest shape here and we're scaling it quite a bit bigger so the box is big enough that the negative is inside of it. I also just call this quickly rotate so we know which one to rotate. And then I'm making a copy of our negative shape here. And then what we want to do is select our rotate shape as well as the negative copy that we made. And then we can just rotate around the axis because now with our rotation shape, we have the perfect center. If the hitbox of the negative exceeds outside of uh, our rotation shape, for example, it would create a new center and it wouldn't work in this way. If you've done that once, you can select both of the shapes that you already have and rotate them together. This is to just speed up the process. And if we're happy with it, um, we can delete the rotate shape again and select all of our primitives in the scene list to group them together into a union, which we can then also call glass, for example. Now, next up, we want to create the handle. For that, I'm just copying our main shape once again and bringing it outside of the union so it doesn't get affected by all the others. I am then rotating it to the side. You can rotate shapes in 45 degrees angle if you hold down shift while doing so, then scaling it down and bringing it to our glass. Now, the next thing that we want to do for a handle is to round it up completely and then we basically copy this shape once again and we scale it wider, holding down Alt again to scale equally on both sides or just to extend it faster as well. Um, scale it smaller, turn it into a negative and then also we see that it's very sharp on the inside so we want to increase the group strength a little bit until it seems fairly rounded up on all sides. Now, one of the problems that we have here now is if we look inside, the handle extends inside as well. So for that, we're just copying the negative shape that we used to round it up from the inside and turning it, in, turning it into a cube in the object's properties menu where we can just exchange shapes with one another. And then we bring it on the inside and just make that cut so it's completely clean and yeah. When we're done with that, we can also just group it together, call it handle, for example. And now we have our glass ready. Now let's come to the exciting part and giving it our material. So we go to the materials menu, click on the plus icon to create a new material. Since we selected both unions, they're automatically applied. 
and I'm changing the color to just a slightly lighter tone, um, giving it a tiny bit of roughness and then just playing around with the glass. You can really see how cool the glass looks here in real time. Um, I'm almost giving it full, not completely, but yeah, I think that looks very lovely. And then we can continue to create the actual beer or liquid inside. And for that, we're going to copy our main shape once again, and we're just extending it and just scaling it down so the liquid actually fits inside. And we can also round it up a little bit. You can experiment with the looks here. But once we're happy, we go back to our materials menu to create a new material. Here we want to give it a much stronger color. I'm going for the full saturation here. Um, we're in this kind of orange yellowish tone. I'm giving it metalness, um, some roughness as well, and some glass. I feel like that's a good look for the liquid. Um, you can experiment quite a bit with those sliders and the looks, it changes a lot. And then once we're happy, we can bring it up, go into a more sideways position. This is now just for the presentation part. I'm rotating it a little bit. And now I want to create some little extras and effects on it. So for that, I'm just using spheres, turning them completely white, giving them a bit of roughness, and then gooping them together to create some foam, like dr dripping out of the beer almost, and also splashing a little bit. I think that looks really cool. This is where you can go ahead and really give it your own personal touch on how you imagine the flow and presentation of your own prop or scene. I think it's a really fun part. I just speeded this up a little bit because it's literally just like gooping spheres together. And then when we are happy with our creation, we come to the presentation part. For that, we want to turn off the floor grid in the lights and environment panel, and then hover to the top bar where we find the backdrop option. Here we can choose our background color. I think I'm just going for a light yellowish tone here to keep it warm and in touch with the creation here. This is completely up to you and you can experiment a lot. Usually something complementary is really nice. And then we can also change the global lighting. And this is really important. I always tell you guys this, um, play around with the global lighting. It changes everything about how your creation is displayed, all the reflections, the colors, materials, everything. And then also play around with the exposure. You can also add your own individual lights then. You can grab them from the top bar as well um, or in the lights and environment panel menu. And here's also very much up to you. You can experiment with them. It's usually quite fun to play around with lighting. I often do a warm and a cold color lighting or rim light. Um, depends on the creation as well. And then once we are fully finished, it's time to publish it. For that, we go to the share button at the top right, click on publish. Now we can choose the thumbnail. This is how your creation will be presented on the discover page. We can put in a name and also add some hashtags. Those are labels that people can click on on the discover page and find your creations in there. And then you can also just change the copyright settings. If you don't want anyone to remix your creations or use them in any other way, you can set this there. And then you just click on share your WOMP and publish it to the community. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We can't wait to see your creation up on the Discover page. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.